If you've been following along from the beginning, then you had to install Nick Collection, which means you had to close your Photoshop and Lightroom. So let's open them back up. Let's open up Lightroom first. Okay, and we were working on this project. Now yours may be a little bit different, and we'll open it back up. Takes just a second to load, and then we're going to go right back to our filters, uh, and uh, we'll choose by flagged. And this is the image we were working on. Because the way we saved it um, in our folder hierarchy, um, the Lightroom catalog is referencing the photos instead of editing the photos. So in our um, Deception Pass folder hierarchy, we had that PSD file, which was this one with the sunglasses here. And when we saved it, because we when we edited it in Photoshop, it also you know keeps it in there. So you can see the before picture. And then this is after we've done our touch up, but this is referencing the PSD file. And you can see that right here. You see? This one is the original raw photo, and this one is the PSD file. So we don't have to um, open this to edit in Photoshop again, but we want Lightroom to be open. So we go up to our apps and go to our Photoshop and open it. And when we open Photoshop, it should open to uh, our recent photos and we can uh, select the one that we were editing and pick right up where we left off. Let this load, and that's right where we were. So, piece of cake. Um, the next step that we were going to add was a Nick Glamour Glow, um, which I, I've already customized it, but you'll be able to change it however you like. But as long as you get it going, um, you can just hit play on the action as long as teeth is selected, this layer is selected, and you go up here and click on the action and then hit play. It does take a moment because um, it is doing a lot of uh, calculations and uh, adjustments that are you know, pre-customized. All right. And it doesn't look like much has been done, but a little bit has been done. And when we created this uh, Nick Glamour Glow um, action, we made it a smart filter. So you can go in and change it by double clicking on the Color Effects Pro and then the Nick Collection uh, platform here opens up and you're able to um, select your view and the left is before and the right is after. So you can see what we've done there. I typically move it off to the side a little bit and we can play with the, uh, the Glamour Glow. So it comes with minus 10 saturation, 30% glow. You can, of course, change this to whatever you like. I typically like between 27 and 35. Uh, for this image, looks like I might just go with uh, about, yeah, maybe the 30 looks good. And uh, we do have a little bit of warmth there, so I might actually take it into the blues. Yeah, maybe just about 6%. If you go really high on it, you can see how dramatically you can make it like a, a sunset photo or really warm. The natural shape for the glow and warmth is zero, and you can adjust how much it is in the shadows and how much it is in the highlights. I've found that 50% is, is pretty good. So I'm going to leave it the way it is, but you feel free to do what you want, and you can add filters and choose from over here on the left and do whatever you like, but... I suggest that you do them in different layers. So if you choose to use this Glamour Glow, that's fine. If not, um, it's, it's good to not add more over here in case you want to modify an individual uh, layer over here in the Layers panel. So I'll just hit OK. 
and it's going to apply what we did. And it looks pretty good. I'm, uh, I'm pretty happy with that. We smoothed out some of our rough spots without making the skin look uh, terribly unnatural. Still looks normal, but um, I think it, uh, it did a good job. So uh, let's bring this to full size. And actually, I might just zoom out just a little bit and go right about there. And um, remember, you can go in and edit it over here. And we're just going to go to the next step on the list, which is sharpening. And as long as uh, Nick Glamour Glow is selected, and we're going to apply the sharpening. Now, the sharpening is a combination of sharpenings that were received from Vibrant Shot, Mike over at Vibrant Shot. And we've just slightly modified them so that they're not so intense and they don't require so much labor. So if you just hit play on it after you've selected the Nick Glamour Glow layer and you hit play, it will pop up with a box here in just a second. There you go. And you can adjust the radiation threshold, but I typically leave them on 9 and 11. Um, seems to be not too aggressive, and um, I, I like it. So let's hit OK, and then it will finish running its course and give us our own folder that's solely dedicated to sharpening. And in here we have two options. The bottom we have the global, and if you'll notice, uh, it's vivid light, and the opacity is 10%. So let me show you what that means. So if you look in here on the pores of the face, for example, you can see that um, they can become rather uh, intense if we move up the opacity of this. So it's not something I'm interested in doing globally. That's something I'm interested in doing locally, very targeted. So if we drop this down to 10%, we get a little bit of global sharpening, but not much. And if you look at the difference that it makes on the whole photo, it's so slight that you can barely notice it. So you can adjust that to taste by dragging this opacity slider to the left and the right. That's a little bit too much for me. I typically like it around 10%. You feel free to do whatever you like. And then we have the details. So this is a masked layer where we can paint white on the parts that we want to really sharpen. And typically I really sharpen the eyes, the eyeballs, the eyelashes, and maybe a few other items here and there, but, but I'm not too aggressive, like maybe uh, the edge of the glasses. The things that I want to pop out. So that may be different for you, but we're going to go ahead and do these eyelashes because I love doing this part. So let's choose a brush. There's a brush tool. We take that flow all the way up to 100%. You can choose how much of it you want to do, but remember, we're working on a layer here. So anything we do, we can just erase it right out, and we're just doing, just doing the eyelashes. So make your brush about the size of the eyelash and go in and paint over it. And it doesn't look like you're doing much at this level, but once we pull out, you're gonna see exactly how nice it actually is. So if we paint each one of these eyelashes, Maybe a little spot in there too. You can even come into where the sunglasses are. Of course, this is entirely up to you. And you can do it how you like. There you go. Let's go over the other eye. See what we can do over there. Oh, we got some really cool stuff here. Got just a few. It might be a little bit aggressive there on that. Uh, if you don't like it, you can fade it. So uh, let me go back, and uh, because I do not like that, and I will delete that out. And let's uh, let's let's go over that again and see 
that's a little bit too harsh. So Shift Command F, and uh, take that down to maybe right around 30% uh, on that particular one. Was a little bit too harsh for me, and uh, you may agree or disagree, but it's entirely up to you what you decide to do. And we can really draw out the eyelashes this way. And I like doing it individual strands. One thing I've learned is there's no quick way to do this stuff. I mean, we have the actions over here uh, that, you know, gives us a nice solid workflow. But, you know, really it's, uh, it's your discretion and how much time you want to spend on each section. You can spend an hour on just removing zits or just an hour on, uh, you know, facial blending or an hour on sharpening. Uh, it's entirely up to you. So I uh, typically sharpen the whole eye. Uh, not everybody does that, um, but I like to make them pop. So I will sharpen the edge first and then uh, do the whole eye. Everybody does it a little bit different. You can add as much sharpening to the eyeball as you want to. And I'll do the same thing over here. So do the outside first. Okay, and then the inside. And it's entirely up to you how you want to do it. So let's zoom out and let's see how we've done here. So let's uh, turn the sharpening off and then turn the sharpening on. And I really like these glasses, so I'm going to do some sharpening on them too, but I'm going to change my opacity on it to 50%. And that's because I'm going to do a lot of sharpening here. So let's take the edge and move right on over it. Got a cool little shine there on the glasses. And there you go. And maybe in there. And then we will, uh, I'm going to zoom out just a smidgen because I think I can do this faster um, by just grabbing the edge and uh, sharpening around that edge. It may not look like much of a difference, but it will make these glasses stand out. That way her eyes and the glasses stand out. I remember we're we're working with a 50% opacity up here, so we're only doing half of what this full uh, sharpener details is doing. And that's because I didn't want them to be too aggressive. This is a much well. This is a smarter way to sharpen um, compared to like in Lightroom where you can sharpen globally. Um, you can just sharpen, you know exactly what you want to sharpen and not just have uh, some crazy uh, global sharpening where it actually turns into a grain because we want to con control our grain separately and um, I like her bracelet I think it's cute and uh, I'm going to make it nice All right. I typically don't sharpen the teeth. I'll show you why. Um, go on 100% here, and we sharpen this area. Little specks and things like that start to show up on the teeth. So um, I, I don't typically do it. Uh, you can if you like. Uh, if you do, I recommend that you um, make the width of the brush small and just do the cracks in between the teeth. Maybe to highlight on that area there, kind of make the teeth pop a little bit. Um, it's it's up to you what, what you'd like to do and how far you want to go with it. Um, but I, if I'm not doing a, a tooth photo, <laughs> I'm not really sharpening the teeth too much. All right, so let's uh, let's pull this out. Let's take a look here. 
Oh, we got an earring over here. We can sharpen that up real quick. And that shouldn't be uh, too terribly difficult. Uh, make her jewelry. Her jewelry is popping now. Get this little area there. Maybe along that edge. Um, we took care of the eyebrow contrast really with the dodging and burning, but you can add a strip of sharpening in there. I don't recommend that uh, that you do it, but you know what? It's up to you. You can also do the hair if you'd like to as well. But we're really not worried about the hair too much. We're looking at her face. She's a cute girl. Summer day. Sunglasses showing you the eyes. She's got a ring up here too that we can sharpen. And uh, there you go. So if you want to see what you've sharpened, there it is. You just hold Option and click the mask over here on the right. And you can see we sharpened all that stuff. It's a lot different than uh, the global sharpening where it sharpened everything. So um, here's our... I might need to actually zoom in a little bit so you can actually see the difference here. So here's our uh, before and then our after. See, we don't want to sharpen the, the skin and pores and things like that. We just want to sharpen the things that we kind of want to stand out a little bit. Maybe her, her pattern on her, uh, the black lines and contrasting on the white for her dress. You might want to pop that out a little bit. Not too much, but it doesn't take much. And you can really make something, uh, you can really make something stand out. Just like so. Beautiful. I'm happy with it. Um, Alright, so I think that just about does it for the sharpening. So in the next video, we're going to talk about uh, gradients and things that you can do to really make your subject pop out.